Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to One UI 3. As you can see guys, I'm already running the latest One UI 3. There are plenty of new things I want to show you. This is here, the software information screen. Apparently the very big change right now in One UI 3.0 is that we now have Android 11. So I can tell you the feeling to have Android 11 on the Samsung S20 Plus. Just, I think, days after the official release is not a bad feeling. So One UI 3 brings Android 11 and it does bring a lot of new features and a lot of new revamp things. I want to show you guys all, so stay throughout the whole video. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. If you want to ask me something, put it in the comments down below. And we're going to start in 3, 2, 1, 0. The first thing I want to show you really is some changes on the whole UI. And of course, some of this really comes with the home screen. Now apparently when you just swipe like this and just go like that, you're going to see that there is a whole revamp section with the notification panel. So it does look a little bit different, right? It's not like in One UI 2.5, you still can scroll to the right, but right now all the icons have been put down below and it has very this nice blurry background effect which I pretty much like <laughs> and honestly I do like what I did here. From devices, apparently you can access all the devices you have connected to your phone. And I show this in One to 5, so you apparently you can manage smart home devices, right? You can also control your media. And speaking about media, we need to talk about the new volume control. So just pay attention, I think you're gonna be shocked. When I press volume down, I can see that we have the indicator here. And this is absolutely new, it doesn't really look even remotely like the One to 5. And when you click here on these three dots, boom, you're gonna have the whole volume section. Right, so here we have the ringtone, then here you have the media control, here you have the notification, and here you have the system sounds. And every time you know you press this, you can see here the title changes. Very tactile, design-wise, again, I really love the way it looks. I wanna show you also something that I was not able to get in One 2.5. When you click here, guys, and click on that button here, apparently you will get the captions. So right now, if I have to play a YouTube video, my phone will be out of displaying captions. That was a feature from One 2.5. But right now it's also incorporated directly from here. And of course, if you press here, then you pretty much have like the old style of controlling. But I need to say that the revamped volume rockers are really something that I dig a lot. I also want to show you guys how it's going to look like when you change the theme from dark theme to the regular daily one. So we have to go to the right side, click on dark theme and voila. I think the animation displayed here is very nice. And let's see if this will have any impact on the volume rockers. And actually it does. They right now look even better, brighter. So if that's your thing, right, you can absolutely use this. I'm just gonna show this again for your viewing pleasure. Again, we have the same blurry background and you have all the little details here. So every time, you know, we press an icon, they will slowly kind of like move. You know, you see the whole bar is moving, this one at least. I think this is really nice. So every time you have to adjust something, just look here, the whole detail is moving. And I do think this is really gorgeous animation from Samsung. The next thing I wanna show you guys is a real nice new and cool feature. So we just have to open you know, the phone up. By the way, every time you see an N like this, it means something is new, right? So that's not so hard for you to discover new things. When you click here, guys, again, it guides you. So go to settings and then you can see here called background. We have the N, which is a new feature. So apparently now we can select a picture or video to show when you make or receive calls, right? So let's see what layouts there are. So if you click on layout, you apparently can keep this one. We can go and use that one. This one, a little bit tiny picture and the above one probably is the better one. Like somebody calls you, you're gonna get a nice bigger picture. I'm gonna keep that one. And let's see now the background. So they have something really stock, right? Which you can use. Now, every time somebody calls me, I'm gonna get this video. Just going to do like for the test. Let's just gonna add this one here. <laughs> and you see how funny it is. You can set this as a call background. So let me just do this. Now, every time I'm gonna get a call, guys, I'm just gonna get something like this. Right, that's not so funny, I guess, but it kind of shows you how powerful this new feature is. You can also use pictures, and I can tell you this really looks better. You see, now every time somebody's gonna call you, you know, I'm gonna get these crayons, you know, like this VST approved video crayons. Let me try to add this one. Last week I was able to do some very nice pics of this balloon. In fact, this is actually a picture that's created and shot by me. If you like this picture and you, you want to use it as a background, let me know and I'm just going to upload for you guys. So apparently now that happened. You can now choose manual backgrounds, static pictures or also videos for the calls that you get and it really looks amazing. Let me try to add a video one. 
Again, it's something that I really shot last week and this is really the inflation of the balloon. So if I set this as a cold background, every time somebody's gonna call me, I'm gonna get this very nice video. And again, I'm really proud I showed this video. So again, if you happen to like this, I can upload this and you can use it, of course. Let's check now again the home screen and some of the animation and what happens when, when you go into your folder. So if I click on my business folder, you can see how gradually now the background is blurred. If I go back, now the background is visible again. Let's do it for the music, it's the same. And I have to tell you guys, I really like this effect, right? Also, I have a feeling that the icons change a little bit. Now this looks really better. They're almost the same, but still I think a little bit smaller. One of the new changes I've seen is actually in the recent menu, so let me just show you. Right now, when you scroll through all the different applications, you know, you're gonna see they are a little bit animated. In the one in two to five, they were just like cars one after the other. And even when you scroll fast, you can see this kind of like rotary animation. So just pay attention, all right? I'm just gonna do it quite quick. I think very nice and also very quick see you know it does really work very very quick so i will not have anything to complain and this is even pre better software so the animations here popping up zooming up a little bit are very nice how they bring things here to the screen apparently very nice job here as well from samsung you can close all boom back to the background again with this nice and little background effect Animation wise, I think they're also very smooth. And by the way, guys, I was not able to find the reduce animation option we had from the 2.5, but I can show you there is something here called remove animation. So if you go to accessibility and you remove the animations, you know, pretty much will have the same effect, right? But the reduce animation, I'm not able to find it. Also, when you open the application, there is no animation. When you close it, you know, it's still some animations. Of course, this is really a pre beta, so it's probably gonna be enhanced in the future. But right now, what we can see on the screen is really very, very nice. If I open the notification panel, again, the same blurriness will happen. And I just wanna show this right now, the day mode. If I go here and I enable the dark mode, just see the transition, right? Okay, you see? Right now, the same will happen. If I open my business folder, the background is gonna get blurred. If I open my music folder again, and if I scroll down for notifications, the whole area will blur, which I think is really, really impressive. All right, time to check the camera. Do we have any new things in the camera? Now, when you open the camera for the first time, pretty much going to look the same. I think the animations here are a little bit different. If I have to close it here, you see, I'm not sure if this was the same in One UI 2.5. I think now they have implemented new animations. In One UI 2.5, the brightness slider was always here. And here, this is the circle used to kind of lock the outer exposure or outer focus. Right now, let's see, we have a lock icon also not present in the One UI 2.5, but then the brightness always goes with the circle. So I think this is a very handy addition because always, you know, all the time you have to do like this, then use this finger to manipulate the brightness. Now it's coupled in one new icon. And I think they also implemented this lock here, which shows, you know, when you have uh, out exposure or out of photos locked. So very nice addition. So if you scroll down here, the settings guys, you're gonna have a button called devices. When you click on devices, you are able to access your devices. Right now I'm just switching light on, light off. And then of course also find your devices. I show this in a separate video. Let's see what other new things you can find here in the settings menu. So apparently if you go down and see some of the things have been moved, like dark mode, I think it's a little bit to the right, but we can also see here there is a new icon. So when we press it, we're gonna be seeing pretty much new options. So what is here? Available buttons, enhanced processing, minimal use, CPU info. So apparently right now they have added some new buttons and let's try to see what they can do. So if I just put here the enhanced processing, I'm gonna put here also the minimal battery use. I'm gonna put also here the one head operation. And there's also a button to tell you the subscriber count. So let's see what this happens. CPU info, I just think those are really from the application I have on my phone. Okay, let's press down. This is really showing me in real time the CPU megahertz usage from my phone and it's really impressive but let's see right now some of these new buttons so we have here the enhanced processing and the minimal battery use i think this was managed right now in one ui 5 in a different way from the battery and from the device care you were able to select like medium like power and etc right now it seems to be like different toggles okay and right now we can see my cpu speed so let's see what happens when i press enhanced processing Okay, apparently now this activate here, you can see there is an icon, I guess, showing that enhanced processing now has been activated. I guess the phone will go now into a high performance mode, pretty much manageable in one UI 2.5 from battery and from device manager, device care, and then battery, then you have these power options. Right now you can do it from here. What happens if we press the minimal battery use? Okay, let's see, I will press directly the minimal battery use. Wow, okay, I'm gonna get a message, it's a better software. But right now also I'm gonna get a new minimal battery use menu. I think like something like this I've seen already in MIUI 10 or MIUI 11 from Xiaomi. This is pretty much nice, guys, if you're running out of juice and you wanna make sure that you go back home and still have some power in your phone left, then this is absolutely the option that you can use. 
Okay, you can have access to phone, message, internet, like, and of course, select also some apps, but just the basic functions. If you click here, you can return, right? So that's a very nice option indeed. And there is also a button called power saving mode. So let's press this one and see what happens. Now, apparently we are in the power saving mode, but how can we tweak the settings? So let's see what happens when I hold my finger on the power right here. Power saving mode life, it can give me one day of battery. And right now, guys, it will give you this power saving option. So apparently, you know, I can just turn this off and then I can just toggle different options. I can turn off my always on display. I can limit the CPU speed to 70% or decrease brightness. So you can just choose a combination or either you set it on and then all of these things are turned off and then actually you're able to save power. So I think this is really a nice new addition, but it seems that actually Samsung kind of like split these three options into three different buttons. And let's see what happens if I hold my finger on the enhanced processing. So I just click here, you just like the high performance mode. Oh, oh, actually it's here. Enhanced processing, right? On, get faster data processing for most of the demanding apps in the games, uses more battery, just like that, guys. So if you wanna play a game, you just hit here the enhanced processing and then boom, you know, you have really pimped up your phone to the maximum. Now I wanna get rid of it, so I just will remove it and we'll continue to explore the new features here into the Samsung One UI 3.0. And to recap the changes on the home screen, right? So very quickly, a new animation here on the fingerprint. When you go for the quick settings, you're gonna see like the clock really is centered and you have the device and the media move from here now into the center of your phone. But apparently these settings, they've been down below in one year to the five right now, they're accessible from the top and it is not so easy. So if you wanna go directly to the big settings and in fact, you need to use you know your second hand. So it's not really like very suited for a single hand operation, but perhaps it's a design solution and perhaps they're gonna change it. So right now, what is important is they kind of like moved the clock information here into the center. And with that said, let's conclude the whole overall UI design and let's actually jump directly to the settings. Now, I'll have to say when I saw it for the first time, now we can say that Oxygen OS 11 and the One UI 3 to 0 really are like brothers because it pretty much looks like the Oxygen OS. And don't get me wrong, I really love Oxygen OS and I really tend to love One UI 2. So right now, I think with those changes, they're really getting closer to each other. That's not bad. You see here the information previously, I think this was centered or probably even in turn to the left. Right now we have like an icon with your name and the email here. Okay, let's go into connections. One of the new things is this Android Auto. Apparently, you know, you can connect your car if you have a fancy new car and you can connect your phone to the car. Android Auto, very strong on Android 11. But let's go, just go back. Sound and vibration, we pretty much see the very same settings we used to have before. If we go to sound quality and apps, we have the equalizer, we have the Dolby Atmos, yeah, uh, set it to Alto also for gaming. So we pretty much have the same settings there. Let's go to notifications. I think notifications are really revamped. And guys, this has to do with the Android 11 stock changes. So remember when Google really launched Android 11, there were a lot of changes on notifications and now I'm happy to see that Samsung actually adapted them and we have them here in One UI 3.0. So right now you have a notification, you can either be brief or it can either go detailed. Now, if you choose detailed, you lose a lot of the settings. If you go for brief, apparently you have something called here brief pop-up settings, which is absolutely new. This was not to be seen in One UI 2 to 5. If we just click it, we're gonna see that actually edge lighting is here. So edge lighting previously was in another section. Right now now it's moved into notifications, add lightning style NOM. If you click here, you can pretty much see all the things that you can do. So let me just demonstrate guys. You wanna have an edge lighting like this, or you wanna have it a little bit colorful. We wanna probably go in for advanced. So there are plenty of nice options. Let's go for the bubbles. Things that we've seen before, right? You can even color by keyword, even show when the screen is off, which pretty much I think is the goal. But what is very, very important is that you can see here included apps. And when you click on included apps right now, you can apparently enable edge lighting for most of this application, actually for all of this application. And I know this has been previously an issue, people were complaining, but it works right now with all of your application, Google Handout, Google Messages. I know there has been issues before. Right now, there is no excuse. You know, if you select brief notification, you can go into included apps and you can can select all the notifications. Now, if you go back to detail, you see some of these options are missed, right? So I'll just say, okay, let's just stay to brief right now. And then you can even see do not disturb advanced settings. You can just click here, all right, status bar, how many notifications to be shown on the screen, battery percentage, yes and no. I would say rather like the standard stuff. But this here is a very new and welcome addition in One UI 3, directly coming, I think, in sync with Android 11. The next section we want to explore is the display. So I just click display. 
you have the light mode, you have the dark mode, you have the brightness, adaptive brightness, you have the motion smoothness, which is really like 60 hertz, 120 hertz. I guess there is no doubt what I'm gonna use. You have the blue light filter, screen mode, it's pretty much the same, the resolution. I'm just going down below to see if there are any new changes, but it pretty much seems like this. Let's go now, next section, wallpaper. Here inside you have my wallpaper, you have the gallery, you have wallpaper services. And I think actually the one new thing here is if you go for the dynamic lock screen guys, you're gonna get pretty much more modes. In the previous One UI 2.5, I think that only five or four were available. Right now, I think they're like at least nine or 10, probably, okay, 10. And there's also a special one that you can choose, which probably is a combination of the landscape and plants. I'm not sure what it does, but you have art, food, and desserts. And I think in One UI 2.5, you only had landscape, docks. This is absolutely a new change coming from One UI 2.3. And wow, oh, okay. I tend to say that the special one is already looking very nice. Now themes and home screen and lock screen are almost the same, so I will not actually bother to show this to you guys. Biometric and security is pretty much the same. So let's scroll down a little bit here to advanced features. There are some new settings here. Now Samsung DeX is apparently moved out here. You know we have the wireless DeX, which I think came in one year 2.5 and it's a crazy, crazy feature. You know, you can wirelessly connect it to your MiraCast TV and then boom, you have it. PC routine is pretty much the same. I think all these things are pretty much the same, but if you go here, to motion and gestures. I think one of the most welcome changes here, people are crazy about it because right now you finally have the option double tap to sleep, all right? So this means when you enable double tap to sleep and you're on your home screen, then you are able to get your phone to sleep. So let me just demonstrate this guys. I'm right now in my home screen, double tap. Okay, phone is sleeping, double tap, phone turns on. And because I'm using now this new dynamic lock screen, I have some new wallpapers there. Let's just go back and see some of the other settings. All right, let's see what is next. Digital wallpaper is pretty much the same, but here in battery and device care, there are some new things. So if we click here, by the way, you can see that there is something called show icons on app screen, device care added to app screen. We have here also like a bar icon. So if you click on it, you can see app issue history. Right, and you can see performance optimization history, the last auto restart, last menu restart. Okay, how these things affect the battery. Let's see what we have here. So we have the advanced. When you go to the advanced, you have the auto optimize daily, the auto restart, the adaptive power saving, which I always turn on. It's one of the tips to really get like the most of your phone. And then let's just go guys to battery. When you go to battery, we're gonna see we have the power saving mode. And when you click on that one, you have these options. So apparently when you enable the power saving mode, but let's go here on the advanced settings. And Actually, in the advanced settings, you're gonna see one of the major changes in One UI 3.0 because right now they split it like this. So you have the minimal battery use, you have the enhanced processing, and you have the adaptive battery. So I think those things I demonstrated in the first part of the video. If you want to keep your battery long enough so that you can go home and plug it and only get some more juice, you can go for minimal battery use. If you want to get the most out of your phone, like get fast data processing for the most demanding apps and games, you just click enhanced processing and then you have the adaptive battery. So they change these three profiles before you had like the medium profile we have a low, the high performance profile and we have like the standard optimized profile right now I think they change it to this I like this and also of course remember this corresponds here also to the new toggle so you can go very quickly to enhanced processing or you can go very quickly to minimal battery use so I think this is really a very nice addition. I wanna see if there are any changes to the keyboard. So I'm using right now the Samsung keyboard. So you know the fancy trick when you zoom up like this, put it into the landscape, guys. You're gonna have these two separate keyboards. I just click here. So you have to search, okay, okay. You can search for emoji stickers. You have the translation, you have the Samsung pass, you have Spotify. I think all of these things we saw, the keyboard size. I think the YouTube button is here, okay. So there are some quite new things. Translation, okay, very nice. So let's just test here, test. Okay, yep. Yeah. All right, so we can apparently try. Oh, it works, but I think this is like the majority of the new settings. So let me just show you again the home screen menu. Okay, very fast, revamped. I think all the animations. So if you just open this one, you see like the way the animation work, I think it's pretty flawless. Now, I'm not sure why it popped out like this. I didn't change anything. Perhaps it's a bug on my phone, but I think all the other animation, it's pretty much very nice, very smooth, and I think even faster than One UI 2.5. So I think One UI 3.0 from what I see right now is really a very nice and welcome addition new recent screen menu, new animation, new background blurring effect. Remember when I pull off the quick settings or when I go to the apps, I think these changes really do make some difference. Don't forget, you also have here like the new volume rocker with all these new options. And again, it does change when you go from dark mode to light mode. Of course, you have also the new quick settings here. 
revamped design and also new quick toggles that were not there in One UI 2.5. We have these new power modes. So there are plenty of new things in the One UI 3.0. And again, guys, this is just the start, right? This is a pre-beta. They'll keep adding more and more extras while they release it for public testing. In the camera, there were also some new settings in the camera. Remember what I showed you, like when you lock the outer exposure and outer focus. So I would say right now, I'm really impressed with the way it looks. If you even go to the settings, it does look very familiar. Some of the things look regrouped. Some of the things are pretty much the same. Don't forget about the double tap to sleep the phone and new animations, new control of the notifications. So plenty of new things. If you're looking forward for more videos like this, guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and actually leave a comment down below and we're gonna catch up in the next video. With that said, guys, I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. I put a lot of efforts into making this, really try to do it on time. VST over and bye.